Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 23 of my Iron Man Hulkbuster cosplay inspired suit. Inspired by the suit in Avengers Age of Ultron, which is due out, I guess, in a few months now. So I've been building this for quite a few parts. And last time we started to frame out some of the design using 3D printed frames that I'm eventually going to stick foam and other sheet material on. So last time I told you about another project, which is my 3D printed R2D2 project. And in the same week I published a Hulkbuster video, I did um, another video on building the R2D2 frame with 3D printing. And I waved R2D2 around like this and said, hey, well, don't forget to watch that video. And I'm going to say the same thing now. So don't forget to watch Friday's video, which is another update on R2D2. So a few people commented that I didn't get very much done in the last Hulkbuster video because I only got these um, bicep frames done. And the rest of the video was basically consumed of me talking and adjusting the posture and everything like that. So um, a few people have wondered whether I'd spend all my time building R2-D2 and I hadn't done, that's why I hadn't done so much on Hulkbuster. Um, in reality, you'll notice that when I was waving R2-D2 around in the Hulkbuster video, it was actually much further on than it was in the R2-D2 video that I published on that Friday. And that's because that video about R2-D2 is actually finished before Christmas. And in fact, the video that comes out this Friday on R2-D2 was also done several weeks ago. And you'll notice that I've got wires and motors and things fitted in here, which aren't in the Friday video. So Friday's video is part three of R2-D2. And in fact, I'm now working on part four of the video, um, which is mostly fitting motors to the chassis. So in fact, I do have the time last week, or at least in the last Hulkbuster video, and this one dedicated to Hulkbuster. And I'm gonna be using both 3D printers to print the parts. So the plan today is to try and sort out the rest of the panels. So we're going to replace this cardboard with a 3D printed frame. Think about the weapons pods that go in the shoulders and also have a look at the thighs, which are very neglected um, and think about the shape of the feet and legs. So let's have a look at some CAD. Here is the first part of the frame which I've designed, which goes on, as you look at the suit from the front, it goes on the left hand side and it's basically the um, chest plate to the left of the existing chest plate and the curve on the left hand side of this piece goes around the shoulder bell pivot so it's got some curves in it um, to shape that piece of armour and it's also got this weird dog's leg in it which means it fits behind the existing chest plate and fits, fits onto those brackets which um, the chest plate is held on with so um, this is obviously quite tricky to print because loads of it's floating in the air so as usual we need to break the parts down so what I've actually done is cut this up so I can print it in pieces and then acetone weld all the pieces together. So it's going to be printed in ABS, which we can make a chemical weld with acetone. And I've also filled in the bridges there, so those curved sections. I've filled those in so all the bottoms are flat. So any pieces which are curved I've tried to lay flat on the bed or um, fill in under the arches. So we'll get those printed and then we'll assemble it put it on the suit, we need to make some other brackets and things to hold it on at the right angle, then we'll make a mirror and do the other side, and then we'll continue like that to frame out all of the pieces. That is the Lulzbot TAS 4, which is just printing that large piece all in one go. It's printing in 15% infill. It's done an hour 25 so far, so um, that should be finished in less than three hours altogether. And the TAS 3 has already finished its parts, which are the extra sticks which go on the right hand side where the dog's leg part is. It's together and assembled, there we go, how exciting. You can see all the contours there, so that will take the foam pieces. This cutout is for the pivot over here, so let's get rid of this piece of temporary cardboard. And so we need to fit this in, so this piece here fits behind the existing assembly. Remember we've got this door that opens on both sides. So we need to float this so the foam um, or the sheet material for this comes up against this. So it's at an angle like that. Also, so this fits in here and this can still move. So uh, the shoulder bell only moves in two axes. When I rotate the arm, it stays effectively stationary. It only goes up and down and in and out a bit. So I just need to make sure my bracket holds that in exactly the right place, wherever that is, to make sure that pivot passes through the hole at all times and then I need some more brackets that fix this up to here and obviously there'll be a continuation of that piece going upwards and also something in there to hold this edge against the existing bracket then we can make the piece that's 
scoops down here with its feature on and we can also put the extra pivots and the fake pistons back in here and make a mounting for those so i need to print off the one for the other side and then we can try to get those mounted in there and then that will give us an idea of what the contour of the suit is these are installed on both sides there's one over here as well and i've put two little right angle brackets that have attached these to the stilts we'll have a closer look in a moment um, that's fairly rigid at the moment it will have another piece that goes back to this black bracket that holds the arm on um, but for now i need to slope in some pieces at the bottom here uh, which will go down characteristically of the hulk buster in the age of ultron trailer which will um, go down just above this piston. They can't go too far back because I still need to get my arm into the arm. Um, and the, obviously the inside of this bicep cage is open so I can get my arm through, so that's a consideration. Now this piston doesn't move up or down, it only moves sideways. So I can make a nice scoop thing there and also need to cover this end with something. I've also fitted back in these other fake pistons on both sides, which at the moment are just taped on at the bottom and held on with a clamp at the top. And the reason for that is um, I need to make a bracket to hold them, but it also needs to detach with this cod plate, which comes off in one piece for transport. So let's have a closer look at these. We'll have a bridge to the back here. And on the inside, the piece that'll come down. So what we've got with this dog's leg is the ability to have a plate behind and one in front so we can have a multi-layered approach. And that allows this door to still open and for us to uh, cover the gap behind with something so you don't just see straight into the suit through the gap. So let me get the next parts printed off and then we can see how that looks and hopefully attach those ab plates and work our way down to the thighs. Here is the next part which tacks on the bottom in blue, the previous part is red and that's going to be made out of four pieces which will obviously be acetone welded on again and then from the very bottom of that we'll have a piece down which covers the base end of the piston so again I've separated those onto the flatbed which will get printed and we'll put those on both sides that is the first side getting printed on the TAS 4 and we'll do one side stick it together and before we make the mirror so I think this part is probably going to take an hour and a half or so to do all of those four pieces the previous ones, obviously with two printers going, took three hours each side with one printer that would have been considerably longer. I've fitted those pieces on both sides, so we've got one just here and we've got one over here, so let's just have a look sideways at that contour. So I'm pretty happy with how that's worked out. So we've got that nice curve down there and I've got this little bracket on the bottom here which attaches it onto the wooden chassis. So that eventually means I can have a plate that covers the end of the piston. So obviously all you see of that is just that bit in between the bicep and the body there. That gives me scope to put a kind of extra piece around here as well, which is something that will come onto when we do the thighs. So the fake pistons are now attached. I've got a little bracket right in here that holds them in a V shape and they're nicely wedged into the chassis here so they're nice and secure. They also lift off when I take the cod plate off, which comes off in one piece for transport. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. Let's just uh, give it a long shot. I'm really happy with that contour and that's gonna be really good to put the skins on. So I've done quite a lot of 3D printing. It's um, about two days later now and I've also done some parts for the thighs. Let's have a look at those thighs. So I've done quite a bit of 3D printing on these already. I've made these pieces, which are the thigh sides, which are going to go roughly here. And those are kind of similar to the ones in the movie. If you have a look at the Hot Toys full-size statue, it's kind of the same shape. It's kind of wedge shape, and it's got this piece on the bottom. And I've also done a front for the thigh, which is a very simple piece, which is just a very bo uh, simple box section, but it's got this kind of recess shape um, in the knee here to put some details in. So putting these on together, it's going to look something like that and we need to have some curved contours to this which um, link the two of them uh, make sure we place this side one so it's sufficiently far back that it's in the middle of the thigh so that's the next thing that i'm going to do and i've actually produced all of these already so i've got them for both sides that's quite a bit of 3d printing that i've been doing so let's have a look at some cad for the pieces that link this together and mount them onto the thigh here is my CAD drawing of the thigh. So the silver piece there is uh, my representation of the frame. It's just blocked in rather crudely so I can work out how to position the parts. And then obviously the blue parts are the frame. And you can see the front and the back parts that I just showed you in real life that I've already printed. And that leaves effectively these two pieces. 
which are the pieces I now print and those are going to have screw holes to screw onto the wood and hold the other pieces in place. There will be more to this eventually but these are the main brackets to hold those pieces in place so we can get a feel of what it looks like and as usual I've split those down so they can be um, printed on the bed they're each cut in half as well because they're slightly too big and laid flat on the bed and here it is with the thighs installed so I'm pretty happy of how those are looking so um, obviously the contours look pretty good they kind of match this I've still got a belt sort of section or a cod plate section to build which will fill in some of this gap but I think that contour flows quite nicely um, obviously these frames are quite a lot bigger than the thighs themselves um, and there's also some pieces to build around the back and of course we still need to build down the legs so let's turn that sideways we'll have a look at the profile there's its sideways view, so hopefully you can see that the thighs stick out quite a bit at the front there. They kind of match the front of the body there, and this um, piece of the rib cage effectively is showing quite nicely. The other thing I wanted to point out was even though this piece seems quite far back on the thigh, the thighs have got quite a bit to be built on the back, and at the moment that is directly underneath the arm, so hopefully that's in the right place, even though it looks quite far back. There are some other features to come on this frame part, um, which will be um, kind of characteristic of the Hulk Buster in the trailer and the movie. So I'm just going to grab the camera and we'll have a closer look all the way around. Here is a view of the inside, which I'm quite happy with. I quite like the way these rib cage pieces look at each side of the arms. You can see the biceps there and obviously I can reach down for the joysticks. Let's just have a closer look at those thighs. So I've got that side panel there directly under the arm. Um, I've got the cables which um, attack the, basically the knees lock and I've got these bicycle brake cords so I left holes in the frames there so that I can run the cables up and there's also a nice clear piece here so the knee can bend um, and this doesn't interfere obviously this is only attached to the thigh and this piece of wood slides so the thigh actually slides inside so there's no way of putting a stilt in here but we do have more to build on the back which will help hold this in place and obviously the back of the leg where the hinge is so that I can climb in and out. Unfortunately, I don't have any more time for designing and 3D printing this week. I need to get the video uploaded. So that's the end of this episode, although I think I've achieved quite a lot. I'm really happy with the approach that I've taken. So next time I'm gonna continue with these frame parts, working my way around the back of the suit, and hopefully putting that gullwing door mechanism back on and trying to deal with those panels. And importantly, trying to deal with the sides um, of the shoulders, which go either side of the helmet and open up to let the helmet open and open up to let weapons out and make sure they work well with the gullwing door flip up back mechanism. Also like to look at the back of the thighs and think about the interaction there between the thighs and the back of the torso so they can open and allow me to walk around, which is quite important. So don't forget to check out my channel for more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out my social media pages in the link in the description to this video.